and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin. This is my co-host Teddy. It's freezing here in New Zealand at the moment, uh, so that's why I'm wearing my uh, fur hoodie today instead of the jacket. It's fake fur, by the way, so don't freak out. And today we're going to be doing a cooler review. And it's the uh, Deep Cool Captain 240 All-in-One Liquid Cooler. So let me know after you watch this video what you think of it and if you want me to do more CPU coolers because I don't think I've done any on this channel before. I've done them over on Playtech TV, um, but I've never done them on Tech Showdown. So, yeah. Anyways, let's jump straight in then with the specs. So the radiator on this guy is coming in at 274 by 120 by 27 millimeters. So what do we take from that? So it's a, it takes two 120 millimeter fans and that's 27 millimeters thick, which is pretty normal, about an average amount. The radi radiator material is aluminium, so that's pretty standard as well. I mean, you see some of them are copper and brass, but for the most part they're aluminium, and that's just fine. Uh, as I said, it takes two uh, 120 millimeter fans, that's where the 240 comes from, if you didn't know. The fan airflow is rated at 182.24 CFM. And that's at its max RPM. The fans go up to 2,200 RPM. The life expectancy is 100,000 hours. And the fans feature a fluid dynamic bearing. So that's really good for reliability. And uh, they have a 4-pin fan connector. The other cool thing I like is that it has a detachable fan impeller. Which allows you to re-oil it. Now I don't know how many people are actually going to use this function. Uh, but I guess it's good that it has it, and it also has rubber mounts on uh, the fan mounts, so that's really good. I like this because if you've ever heard a uh, fan vibrate in a case or something, oh man, the noise is so bad. I've heard it a few times, and it's really, really bad. And as soon as you fit something like rubber grommets to it, uh, it can alleviate it, and it just it's completely quiet then. But yeah, it's pretty bad. The uh, pump is quite crazy when you look at it. Um, I mean, the fans are nothing fancy. I've seen this same, similar design quite a few times, um, aside from the red, which is cool. But the pump is really cool. So it's got this kind of like steampunky design. I, I quite like it. It lights up red, and uh, you can see the fluid flowing through it. I don't know. It's pretty cool, but it's quite chunky. Uh, so the pump has a life expectancy of 120,000 hours, has a three-pin connector, and features a long-life ceramic bearing and a three-phase induction motor impeller. So that's all really good. Going to get the liquid around there really nicely. And uh, the base of the pump is just uh, brushed copper, so that's uh, quite standard as well. It comes pre-applied with thermal paste too, so you can just chuck it straight on. The, the tubing for it is flexible, which is always good, but it's... Uh, it's kind of just the standard size. I'd rather, I mean, a lot of all-in-one coolers you see these days run uh, a bit thicker of tubing in them, so that's uh, quite a nice thing. Now, moving on to installation and compatibility-wise, it's going to go with about any, everything. So, uh, Intel-wise, it'll go with 2011 version 3, or just normal 2011, uh, LGA 1366, uh, 1150, 1155, and 1156. And then as far as AMD goes, you've got FM2+, plus, FM2, FM1, AM3+, plus, AM3, and AM2+, plus, and AM2. So I think for 80% of you guys out there, it's going to fit your CPU. Probably 90% of you guys. I don't think any of you are going to have an issue with it at all. Now let's get on to the installation itself. And it is very easy and straightforward, especially if you follow the manual. Uh, you shouldn't be having any problems at all with this guy. It it just goes on so easily. Um, I've done it in push configuration, mainly just because installation is easier that way. Uh, however, if you want to be doing it more properly, I should say, in terms of it being easier to clean, then you would rather run it in a pull configuration with the, uh, the fans pulling air through the radiator, just because it's easier to clean that way. But I just did it, as I said, push, push because it's easier to mount that way. You don't have to, if you do it and pull, you have to like slide the, the screws through the fans and then try connect it to the radiator and it's all, you know, you, with two people it'd probably be easy, but by yourself it can be a little bit difficult at times. Now the pump is quite large, as I said before, but I had no issues with RAM compatibility. My RAM is quite tall, so um, yeah, that's good. I mean, this is a thing. This is probably one of the biggest benefits about uh, liquid coolers is that obviously uh, RAM compatibility 
um, for the most part, you should be sorted. You really shouldn't be having any issues. With the big air coolers, it can be a constant issue. A lot of them these days, especially the newer Noctua ones, have cutouts for uh, high RAM, but um, still, it's, I don't know, you, you're always more safer in terms of uh, the compatibility, RAM compatibility, with an all-in-one liquid cooler. And this is definitely one of the easiest coolers I've had to install, and I've installed a bunch by now, different all-in-one liquid coolers and uh, just normal air coolers. And this one was really easy, I didn't get frustrated at all, the manual was very clear, and it was very straightforward and easy to do, um, setting up the different bracket for your socket type and all that, it's very straightforward and very good. So I was very happy with that. Now, let's talk about the performance. So, being that this is my first uh, CPU cooler review on this channel, I don't have anything to compare it to, so I'm just going to give you the raw cooling numbers. So I do have my normal uh, Corsair H110 with a Noctua NFA14s on it. But when I was trying to test it, uh, it was being really funny with the fan speeds, and oh, it's just being a nightmare. So maybe I'll get that sort of for my next CPU review, so I have something to compare it to. But this time it was just being really annoying, so I couldn't get it to get the results to come out the way I wanted. However, let's get into this guy. And uh, of course, I'm running a 4770K clocked at 4.4 uh, GHz. It's 4770K is run really, really hot. Um, it, hotter than 4790K, I mean 4790K has brought the temperatures down uh, a little bit which is quite good. So anyways, the first test I did was Intel tuning, uh, Extreme Tuning Utility, it's the CPU stress test, I did it for 5 minutes and it averaged 67 degrees Celsius, so that's really really solid. Then uh, Intel Extreme Tuning Utility again, this time doing the benchmark and it went up to 93 degrees maximum which is getting quite hot, but I mean, my 4770K is like super hot anyway, so that's fairly good, and uh, scored 1105 marks. And there was no throttling at all, so that's really what you want to be looking for. And then the last test I did was video rendering, so a 5 minute 1080p file uh, rendering obviously on the CPU, and it went up to 70 degrees Celsius max. So, really good there. Uh, performance wise, I've no complaints. That's really solid. Um, even compared to some other things I've tested in the past, just off the top of my head, those numbers sound really good. Um, so, I'm very impressed with that. Now, performance isn't everything, that's also noise. So, how did this do in terms of noise? Well, it was very good at low RPM. Um, there's very little noise at all, nothing to really complain about. Easily drowned out by, you know, your normal computer use. Um, so very good uh, at low RPM. However, once those fans start ramping up, it really does get quite loud. I think after about the 1500 RPM mark on those fans and above, it's getting pretty loud. Um, but I'll let you judge for yourself as always. So this is what it sounds like at idle. And this is what it sounds like on load during the Intel Extreme Tune Utility benchmark. Now those, uh, the fan kind of go up and down a bit, the fan noise a bit when it's on load like that because that benchmark kind of spikes it up and down a bit but it gives you an idea of kind of like that would be the worst case scenario as that was about the hardest test I have to do on it. So that leads us now to the conclusion and my consumer advice for you guys. So uh, design wise I think it looks awesome, especially the pump, it's just, this steals the show. It looks so cool, it lights up red really nicely. It looks really uh, sexy, as you can see it in my case right now, lighting up uh, red. Um, and yeah, I, it's just so cool with the steampunk design, I really like it. Uh, the pump, the uh, fans I should say, do look cool because they're red, but it's kind of more standard and the radiator itself is pretty basic. Uh, performance wise, really impressive. I thought it was really solid and uh, really good. An installation was a breeze, um, even compared to some other coolers. Uh, you might think that with such a big pump on it, it might be a bit more clumsy to you know install but it's not it was really easy and noise wise it was a little on the high side when on load for my taste 
Uh, however, when it was on low load, there was very little noise at all, so I thought that was really good. And the price this is coming in at, at New Zealand anyways, is really good. It's quite a bit lower for the most part than the you know other 240mm all-in-one coolers. Um, so I quite like it. I think it's really good, and it's it's more on the budget side of the 240 mils. However, I think you're getting a really good deal for something that performs the way it does and, you know, looks the way it does. I think it's really good. And I think very for money-wise, it's really, really good. I have no complaints with the price that's coming in. I think it does a really, really good job. Now, thank you all for watching this video. Uh, leave me a comment down below if you want me to do more CPU coolers in the future. I'm just trying this one out, see if you guys like it or not. Um, and yeah, of course when we do more of them then I'll have more things to compare it to so it'll come out a bit nicer in terms of the performance uh, <laughs> review side of it. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think and as always uh, subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already. What's that Teddy? My fans are awesome? Mm, Teddy's right, you guys are awesome. I thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time.